Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys 1-6 scale Sony Spider-Verse figure unboxing and review. You all know what time it is, right? It's Morbin time. Today we're going to be taking a look at Michael Morbius played by Jared Leto. Now I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new Hot Toys 1-6 scale figure review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, I like it even though it is relatively simple and of course it's Morbius. We have an image of I think the figure himself front and center because that moustache looks very sculpted to me and he's emerging out of this red and blue colored smoke which represents number one how they travel around in the movie through those smoke trails and number two red for real blood and blue for the fake stuff. And then they've added these subtle circles just around the front of the box, as though he's using some kind of echolocation or something. We have high gloss for the Morbius movie logo, whereas the rest of the artwork is done in more of a satin finish. The circles do continue their way around the side of the box. They are a little bit more pronounced here. And then, of course, you can see more of the red and blue smoke. Around the back is pretty boring. You just have a bit more of those circles. They do disappear in the middle, though and some warnings and legal information. Whereas underneath the slipcover, an open window showcasing Michael Morbius inside, and I'm already loving that little pop of purple on the inside of his coat. Oh yeah, this is way nicer than what was on the back of the box on the outside on the slipcover. We've got a couple of product shots of Morbius, you can see his effect pieces, and the bats. Although, they may not be hanging around Morbius for long. I reckon there's another figure in the collection that might inherit these bats. Eventually. I didn't mean to make it sound all cryptic like that. I plan to give the bats to Batman from Batman Begins, just because of the way that he uses the bats in that film. First in hand impressions for Michael Morbius? So far so good, he feels surprisingly hefty and that purple is just poppin'. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, which is done in the typical Hot Toys hexagonal style. It's quite low profile, so it's not going to add a ton of height to him in the display. And it's very understated. It's got this almost black artwork up on top, but when the light hits it, you can see that it's more of a navy blue. We've got the Morbius movie logo, a high gloss section off to one side, and a matte textured swarm of bats on the other. Then for the nameplate, Michael Morbius. Up top we have a bendable flight pole, plus a spring-loaded waist clamp. And because Morbius is wearing a full fabric outfit, I reckon you can leave him in a flight pose for a long period of time. Speaking of flight poses, we have a swarm of bats mid-flight, one for either side actually. They are on these translucent armatures and they're adjustable. You can move them up and down, then there's a screw so you can lock them in place. And you can also bend them in on the flight pole plus in the middle. Unfortunately, they are not on ball joints, so you can only kind of swivel them left and right a little. I would have loved if they would have been on ball joints, that way you could have angled them up and down. The swarms are different from one side compared to the other. They are painted in this metallic looking brown, there's some airbrush shading, but the eyes for some reason are completely unpainted. I would have loved to have seen some high gloss black for the eyes or maybe even some red just to help them pop a little bit more. But at a distance, these bats, they are going to absolutely add a ton of presence to Morbius. Next up we get some effect pieces. These are meant to be the smoke trails from Morbius when he's sort of flitting around as he does in the movie. They're cast in translucent purple plastic and they are significantly darker towards the bottom compared to the ends of the smoke trails. That I think is going to help them blend in a little bit more with his outfit when we pop them on him later on. And lastly, one extra set of hands. There's skin texture on the surface, you've got shading on the very long nasty looking fingers, plus some spiky nails. 
but they are cast in more of a soft rubbery material so even though the instructions say you need to be careful of them i think they're more so talking about you spiking yourself rather than you breaking off the nails because they do feel quite sturdy what we are going to do now though is get morbius himself out here Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Now I probably waited way too late in the video to say this, but we are not reviewing the movie Morbius. We are reviewing this figure, so I'm not going to attach any of that film baggage to this release. I'm just going to talk about him from a pure figure perspective. At least I'm going to try to. This is a really good release, surprisingly. He's not perfect, we do have a couple of things to discuss, but for the most part, I think they nailed it. They got the creepy factor. They've given him the effect pieces. The coat is wired. The proportions, to me, look about right. And because he's wearing a full fabric outfit, I don't think posability, for the most part, is going to be a massive issue. Up close and personal, kicking things off with Morbius's head sculpt. Dude looks absolutely pissed. They nailed the expression and the detail, in my opinion. There's skin texture everywhere, he's got shading in the wrinkling, a five o'clock shadow, a lot of depth to his mouth because his tongue is set back all the way in there, and everything inside his mouth is painted to look slightly glossy, so it comes across even more realistic. But my favourite detail has to be the eyes. When you tilt the head sculpt forward and you have these piercing red eyes looking up at you from underneath this very defined brow bone, yeah, he looks like he wants to tear your head off, which is perfect for the living vampire. The head sculpt itself, though, we have flipped him round because I do want to discuss what's back here, isn't quite perfect. The hair looks great. You have flow to it, you can see how he's got this centre part, there's texture, you have these little dangling pieces down below and straight up holes poking through it where you can make out his outfit. But it's solid rubbery plastic, so for range of motion, it's going to be super limited. I like the way it hangs and how it frames his face, but I think they could have gone rooted. And I know nobody would have bought it, but let's be honest, I don't think many people are going to buy it anyway. So if they had gone rooted and had these little curls, you would have had maximum range of motion, and it would have looked even better. Now, after I've said all of that, I think the number one question we have to answer is, does it look like Jared Leto? No, I don't think it does, and honestly, I'm fine with that. Going with the more creature look for Morbius, I think was the right call. For me, I should add that, for me personally, because if you do want to immortalise Jared Leto as Michael Morbius in your display, and this isn't doing it for you, you have a pretty good starting point with this figure. Switch out the hands, commission yourself a head sculpt, and you're pretty much done. You're going to have an accurate Michael Morbius. I personally just like the way he looks out of the box with the creepy head sculpt, although I might get the head sculpt rooted eventually. The outfit itself is quite straightforward, although it is interesting at the same time. You've got these crisscrossing straps and the metallic shiny purple lining. Somehow, some way, I have to figure out how to have this purple lining just popping through, because when he's standing there, most of it is hidden, so maybe I'll use the wires along the front to reveal it a little bit more. If only it made its way towards the front of the jacket more so than it actually does. Tucking it right back there means that it is very hidden. There is this herringbone pattern on the jacket and some real working pockets. Now a little handy tip, if you find that he looks like he has no shoulders, you can pull the jacket up so it does square him off as you can see on this side, making him look way more menacing. With them slumping down like that, he kind of just looks like Morbius the bored vampire. And that's not the look that I'm planning on going with. Now the shirt itself is just a straight black shirt, but you can unbutton it, and there is skin texture and detail, even some hair sculpted in but not painted, all the way down to around his midsection. And the skin tone does perfectly match the head sculpt, so if you do want to have the shirt flared open, that is totally an option. To install his smoke trail effect pieces, it is pretty straightforward, and they do add a nice pop of purple to an otherwise very black outfit, them coupled with the lining of his jacket, of course. You literally just wrap them around his limbs. Now, they are specifically labelled, this one says R1, 
So if you're following the instructions, they do tell you exactly where to put them, so which piece goes on which limb. Okay, so the arm ones are sick, they are 100% staying on him in my display. But the leg ones, probably not so much. I just don't vibe with them. These sticky outy pieces, they look like something is growing out of his leg rather than a smoke trail, which is what they're supposed to be. This one snaps onto his left thigh, whereas this one goes on his right calf. I like the idea of them, but I think the arm ones work better. Having the spikies be translucent and the bottom of it be darker, it looks like it's actually forming out of his black jacket. Coming down to his pants, they're just black cargo style trousers, but the pockets are stitched shut so you can't open them up and pop anything in there. I do like this little attention to detail. Having the pants be slightly too short and the edges tattered, that makes it look like Morbius has grown in his normal clothes and now he doesn't fit them anymore, so like I said, a really nice attention to detail. He's got some actual socks underneath the pants, and then the shoes have some light dry brushing over the top so the sculpt work does pop. On the underside, some sculpted tread with again, more dry brushing down here. For a quick side by side comparison, on the left, Morbius, on the right, Spidey in his upgraded suit. As you can see, Morbius is a little bit taller than Spidey. I don't think he's tall enough though, in real life Jared Leto is 5'11", whereas Tom Holland is 5'7", and Morbius does have some pretty thick soled shoes on. I reckon Morbius is a touch underscaled. Not enough to upset the entire display, just something to be aware of. Next up, this is the comparison I've been most excited about because this is who I'm going to have Morbius paired up with in my display. It's Present Toys Blade. He's also a pretty good stand-in for the Hot Toys one if you missed out on that back in the day. As you can see, Blade is ever so slightly shorter than Morbius. Going over articulation, starting off with his head sculpt. Even though it is on a separate neck with a double ball peg up underneath the head itself, because of the solid sculpted plastic hair around the front and back, you're not going to get a ton of range. Looking forward to there, looking back to there, so pretty much not at all, swivel and a touch of pivot side to side. His arms do go up to there, going forward and back, he is wearing multiple layers though, so just do some futzing after you've dialed in the pose. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that hinges up and down. Swivel at the bicep, double bend at the elbow going past 90, and then for the wrist peg, it's a hinge and swivel. His torso will crunch forward on two joints to there, going back to there, swivel and pivot side to side. I can't feel a lot of padding underneath his trousers and this is quite thin and lightweight fabric so I don't think it's going to get in the way of range of motion. Going forward to there, you can push the pants up to get them to go slightly further forward. Going out to there, swivel at the upper thigh. Ratcheted double bend at the knees going past 90. And a double ball peg for the ankles, which is good for forward and back, swivel, as well as ankle tilt. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is even though I adore this head sculpt, it should have had moving eyes. I mean, it is so restricted because of the hair, you can barely get this thing to move around. So being able to have posed the eyes off to the side a little, I think that would have made up for it. The second annoying thing, and I know this isn't Hot Toys fault, this is Sony's fault because it has to do with the character design. Hot Toys tried their best, the head sculpt is insane, you get effect pieces and bats and this metallic purple lining on the inside of the coat. But it doesn't help the fact that the outfit is just so boring. We've got this black jacket, black shirt, black pants, and just some plain old black business shoes, essentially. I would have liked to have seen something a touch more interesting on Morbius's outfit. The third annoying thing, and I promise I am not throwing shade at the bats. The bats are dope, no question. But I don't like the way they attach to the display base. Number one, I think they should have been on a ball joint so you could have tilted them up and down, not just rotated them left and right. And number two, I think they should have attached to Morbius rather than the display base. That way you're not tied to having to use the flight pole. These would have been a lot more versatile. The first cool thing, and I know I said the outfit is boring, I stick by that. I think the costume design could have taken a couple more passes. In figure format, with the bats and the effect pieces and the purple lining for the coat showing through, 
and the head sculpt tilted down, making him look really mean with those fangs showing. It just works for me. The second cool thing is underneath his shirt, there is actually some hidden detail. If you unbutton it, you can see that his neck, his pecs, and a little bit of his abs are both fully sculpted and painted. So if you did want to have Morbius's ripped physique on display, you can just pop open the shirt and get that done. The third cool thing is Morbius's head sculpt. If you had told me back when the film first came out that when the figure released I would be claiming that this is one of Hot Toy's best head sculpts ever, yeah I wouldn't have believed you, I would have thought that was crazy talk. Now that I have him in hand though, this is one of Hot Toy's best head sculpts. The expression is so fierce, there's a lot of depth to the mouth, there's a ton of skin texture, it's been really well painted, and it looks like Morbius from the film. This head sculpt is firing on all cylinders. Well, except for articulation, of course. Wrapping up on Michael Morbius, a figure that most people, unfortunately, probably will skip just because of the movie. I get it. A movie doesn't do well, you don't like that film, you skip the figure from said movie. It's completely understandable, it's normal in fact. But sometimes a not so great movie spawns a really good figure. And this is one of those times. I am so happy with how Morbius turned out. The proportions look realistic, the jacket is wired, that pop of purple really does help this guy stand out, the bats are sick but I still can't wait to give them to a Batman figure in my display, and he comes with the effect pieces. But the icing on the cake for me has to be that head sculpt. It's so full of detail and personality. This guy's literally just gonna jump out at you when you're looking at your display. He's gonna catch your eye probably every single time even though he is just wearing a pretty plain black outfit. But then you can add those effect pieces on to spruce him up a little. And you can make up for a boring look for the costume with dynamic posing, because he's got a full fabric outfit. You can go crazy with him, you can leave him in a dynamic pose pretty much forever, and you're not going to see any damage on the outfit. And you can't say that about many Hot Toys figures nowadays. Usually they're covered in rubbery material, and they've got padding everywhere. This guy, he's going to be a poser's dream. If you're a fan of Spider-Man the Animated Series like I am, that's where I was introduced to Morbius, you might just want to consider adding this guy to your Spidey display, because trust me, he is better than the movie that he's based off. Now, I got mine at a discount from Pop Collectibles. As always, do your own research, make sure you are comfortable before buying. I have popped the link to their site in the description below, along with the discount code Justin's Collection for 5% off your order if you do decide to buy from them. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe, we'll catch you in the next video.